Welcome to today's video. We're back with the boy Rohab. Hey. And today um, we're not destroying a Sora. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're um, getting the truck out. So we've got a bunch of stuff to get done today. Main thing is the Skyline is going back to the body shop because we have everything we need. We found a trunk. Um, we got the back panel. We've got the tail lights. Everything we need for this thing to finally get fixed and then move on to the next stage of, you know, getting the rear fenders cut and all the body and aero fitted. But before we can deliver this to Bala and his body shop, we got to get this Lotus off my truck. Um, long story short, my friend Walter uh, was helping someone out get this exported. And when he picked it up to drop it off at the port for roll on, roll off, export, car transportation to the States, it stopped working. Uh, there's some kind of wiring gremlin issue in there and he had to fly back out. So it stayed up on there. They couldn't drop it off to get exported and um, it's all getting picked up or something in the next couple days and some other shop's gonna sort it out and then it'll get fixed and re-exported again. Um, so for the time being, we're gonna get the truck out of here, Lotus off, Skyline on, two Butler's workshop, drop off everything, give you guys an update on what we're doing there. I got some cool parts to show you that we got for the car. Once the back panel and everything's all been done and sorted and that's back to a four door, then this will probably go to my friend Mike at Mike's Racing. Um, for fitting all the new aero kit that we got coming for this. It's already on order. It'll be finished by the end of the month um, And obviously the the rear quarter Over fenders as well as the front over fenders the bonnet and then the two bumpers and the side skirts I spent a lot of money on the aero kit for this. Actually, it's probably the most expensive uh, The Usho factory kits pretty pricey too, but I would say for two bumpers and two and, and a side skirts the most amount of money I've ever spent on an aero kit for just two bumpers and side skirts. Like I, I was actually kind of like, what the hell? But I think it's gonna look epic and it's pretty much the only good looking kit in my opinion. So I think it'll be good. And uh, Rohab's car, typical, broken again. Um, I guess you know what he's like. He lives at 7,000 RPM, one drift event at a time. His clutch exploded, like pieces of the disc were falling out. The guy can't catch a break. You going LS now? Is that is that what this thing's for? What? What? You're no, putting no an LS in this? No one's supposed to know that? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> no. Rohab would never go LS because LS... Can an LS even handle the RPM abuse that you give these things? I don't think so. Well, my plan is a bit different for this year. Uh, we're not going LS, unfortunately. I wanted to go LS, but... All right, you know what, Sam? You're gonna know it first. Okay. Uh, I'm going with a 3.1 liter 2J uh, for this year. Gonna be about a thousand horsepower. Oh, legit thousand. A thousand, horsepower. legit thousand horsepower. Yes. Uh, nice. Hopefully, we're gonna make that, those numbers with the setup that I'm getting. How and, uh, how long is it gonna take you to get this car to that spec? Well, I mean, everything's ready. The engine's ready. I just have to drop it in. That's all. I'm just waiting for shipping. Uh, it's not in Japan. It's coming from outside. Oh. So yeah. Oh. We'll see how that goes. My first round of MSC is in March, so I don't think I'm going to make it. What I'm going to do is just leave it as is for that first, first yeah, round. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yes, because we know it runs. So you're yeah. going to swap the clutch, put the better injectors back on it, and then, you know, get it tuned properly, safe. Yeah. And then once that round's over, just take everything out, test it out. It should be good. Yeah. No, because this has got a fresh built 1J in here right now. Yeah. Well, OEM bit rebuild. OEM so. rebuild, yeah. But this is going out. It's going in a very special car, which we will reveal later. No, don't turn. <laughs> that way. Yeah. Well, yeah, Exposing else. all the secrets. Yeah, so we'll see how that goes as well. So there's gonna be two cars this year that are gonna be, you know, Jay Z powered. Oh, what? What? <laughs> I'm just trolling at this point. Um, for real though, where, where'd that where'd that FD come from? Is that for uh, sale? Uh, no, it's already sold. Somebody wanted one that uh, had a blow on the tree. They want to put a Jay Z in it, actually. The guys from Yakota Base. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so we're just gonna put a Jay Z in that thing. Uh, nice. In the next two, three months. All right, cool. And yeah, it'll be a project car frame. It's orange, is it? It's orange. It's uh, painted orange, actually. It's not. It yeah, I didn't. Don't think they came out with an OEM color yeah, like that. Uh, factory dark green. Nice. And then they just painted over it. Hell yeah. Yeah, it was a parts car, I guess, for somebody back in the days. But yeah. Yeah, it's cool that all the parts cars are now becoming project cars and getting built back into cars because of you know how it's insane the market is. The auction world, to be oh, honest. that's all literally the all the auctions. Gone, yeah. Long gone. Everything else out here is just you know somebody's drift missile. Yeah, it's so hard to find good cars. Everyone that has a good car is keeping them. Yeah. No one's selling them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Anyways, so his car is transmissionless right now, but um, yeah, I mean he'll be back out there driving with me again this year. Hopefully, 
Hopefully, we'll both yeah. be driving together. Yeah, I want to drive with you. I want to see what you got, Sam. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if my 1J, um, my chaser is going to be able to keep up with this thing. This thing is so gripped up, it's it's hard to keep up in my I chaser. Have more plans this year. Maybe. I don't know. Hopefully, we'll get my uh, my pink S15 running, you know? Yeah. That'll oh, be able that, to keep up with this. SR, 500 horsepower with this. I mean, last time we drove together uh, in your pink S15 and my, my car was, that was like fun. Mike's event. Yeah, that was a lot of that fun. That shakedown for this thing. That man. layout was so hard. It was like first and second gear yep. for that layout. Yep, I remember that. It was fun. All right. Well, enough chit chat. We got things and cars to move and Tetris to play, so we'll get this sorted. Hey, Moni. How you doing? How come all your cars are always missing batteries? <laughs> I like the battery uh, relocation behind the seat though. That's cool. If you guys don't know Moni, uh, she used to do a lot of driving down south, right? Like Osaka not area? Anymore. Like Mayhan, not, not anymore? Not anymore. She's all up here. She's a northern girl now. Yeah, sad yeah. life. Sad life. <laughs> the guys down south do have it nice, I, I have to admit. Mayhan Sportsland right there, it's kind of nice. Anyways, this thing's nice. S13, SR of course. Nice Origin Aero kit. And it's all this like pearl kind of white color. I like it. It's a nice little missile. Yeah, but it's got a rainbow flakes in there. Oh, it's rainbow flake? I thought it was like a pearl. No, it's rainbow flakes. It's cool. If you guys don't know, this is Tyler, by the way. He's a uh, he's a pretty decent mechanic, helps a lot of people out, but he also exports cars. A lot of car exporters I hang around with. I don't know why. <laughs> they all, all keep trying to take my money. Yeah, in the, in the mix with everybody else, you know, we out here. Fighting over cars. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> we all get jealous of one another when we get a deal. Dude, about that Z I got though. Yeah, it was pretty nice. Oh, yeah. Pretty nice deal. All these guys were salty. That is such a nice 13. Uh, I want mine to look like that in the States. Maybe I should just bring that thing over here. All right, time to get this Lotus off. This thing's kind of cool. There's definitely no way in hell that I would fit in this though. Dude, it's even got the k and filters. Hell yeah, man. I like hey, that. Fun fact, it's a copy, it's, not, it's a replica. Oh, it's a replica. The guy didn't know when he bought it, I guess. Oh, really? Yeah. Dang. Looks cool, though. It is cool. There's wires hanging out under the dash, so that's not a good sign. Oh, oh my gosh, dude. How no. tiny is that wheel? Not the wheel? Look at, look at me. I cannot sit. You're like the smallest dude I know. Okay, you're not, but like... What? Okay. Dude, the shift is like hitting the dash. That thing's so tiny. It looks Where's like a go-kart. Is there a key in there? Oh, here it is. I don't think it's starting. I smell fuel. Shut it off. Oh, God. Yeah, I smell fuel. You know what reverse gear is on this thing? Uh, I'm just going to assume it's that. All right, I'm going to close this and I guess... Oh, yeah, you can let... Is a winch disconnected? Oh, uh, yeah. All right, uh, roll her off. We got, the, we got the Lotus off the truck now. Uh, we got money in there because we had to push it in the end. Seems like the back brakes are locked up. Yeah, it's weird. The handbrake or the putting right. it in gear rolls forward. Try that again. Right. She's the smallest and just get an idea of how insane this is. We'll hold the door for her. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. You know a car is small when Moni's getting... getting I just don't know how anyone can drive that comfortably unless you're like, you know, eight years old. <laughs> so tiny. It's cool though. It's definitely a cool looking car, but I can't fit in there. All right. Can I pay you 500 yen to fit in there? 500 yen? Dude, that's not enough to pay me to try and squeeze in there. Come on. I'd probably make it work, but it's not going to be... I'd break, bend something for sure. Oh, no. Uh, I can't afford that. <laughs> All right, we're going to push the skyline now. We're going to get this thing out and then get this on the truck as well and then head to the body shop. Skyline's loaded up on the truck. And now i got to show you guys some goodies we got in here for it. In this box right here. So these tail lights that we managed to get for the skyline were the last generation ones that they ever made. These are the nicest ones that you can get for a four-door. These are the most, like, it was so hard to find a good set of these that was fairly priced because everyone always charges crazy money because these are in, I don't even think it was the Koki, I think it was like the, the third iteration. Um, so these were really hard to come by, mainly just because of like the blackening and stuff around the edges here. It's not like that kind of really gross gunmetal gray that's like, int uh, uh, like integrated in the lights. This is really nice color one. So these are gonna look good. For the four-door conversion it's 
I'm still salty about it and I know like a lot of people Hey, he's a cat I know a lot of people have been saying, ah, oh, you're just not doing a good job, like it has to be done, blah, blah, blah. You can do a coupe conversion on these. Literally, these rear quarter panels are different. The, the width is different. The length is different. So when you try to mate up the two-door quarter panel or the rear panel, none of it lines up. The only way that you can do this properly, well, I guess would be if you started from scratch and somehow merged them in together like up here but even then it doesn't line up or match at all and you're still going to have to use a lot of putty and a lot of dodgy dodgy body work so that's just not something i felt comfortable with and it just wasn't worth it, in my opinion like i have the coupe shell up there that we could use parts for but like rohab you were talking to the guys as well and like it's it's, not possible, it, no. it's really it's not really possible different. yeah and the guys obviously don't feel comfortable doing anything dodgy like that i don't want anything dodgy like that with a bunch of putty and body filler so i'd rather just go back to the four door get the really expensive four-door taillights that look good and uh yeah we also got a trunk lid too that what took forever to find yeah and then all, all of a sudden they all just started popping up on yahoo like after three months of searching with nothing so we're gonna go to the baller now take this thing drop it off talk to him see what his eta is on getting everything done with the new back panel we got in there from nissan new trunk new taillights well he did tell me it's gonna take like a week uh, oh wow yeah, he's okay gonna, he's Damn, trying they to work get it fast. done all this week and bring it for, so he doesn't have guy wants his money yeah all right sounds good to me because then we can ship it off to mike and get the rest of the work done all right let's drop this thing off yeah druggy sam's coming back and he's here to stay Woo -woo! <laughs> courtesy of rohab all right so i got my own loader truck now this is my first official made in voyage in it and i gotta do a tight turn i'm putting the camera down all right, so we got the truck in the Skyline at the body shop. Bala's a little bit busy with these customers right now, but the guys are gonna be going through and changing out all those panels for us that we have inside the car and getting everything redone. When we pick it up, I'm expecting it to not have this bumper on there, because like I said, we've got all that aero kit stuff coming for it and that won't be ready till the end of the month. And they're saying that they should have this done within a week's time, which is crazy fast. And then all that's left to get done is the body. Uh, we're going to bring this up to my friend Mike at Mike's Racing who's going to be doing all the painting and the aero fitting and all that kind of stuff. He's kind of like the expert when it comes to drift cars, especially with like cutting fenders and getting this all sealed up properly. The best thing about this is the surface rust only goes up to here and I want to actually cut it right there all the way around. So this is going to clean up really, really nice. So for the most part, we're going to see the rear end back to the way it should be with the four door trunk lid. Um, the four door tail lights and everything lined up there ready for the bumper and the side skirts, fenders, over fenders, all that kind of stuff for the rear and the front. And it's gonna look good. Um, I'm gonna get them to finish up doing a few more like rust treatment stuff, some stuff we found that I just wanna get treated as well and then resealed and then seam sealed. So we should be good after that. But everything's looking really good, especially all the work that they did previously. Even though this has been out in the weather and sitting in the rain, looks really nice. So I'm pretty hyped. But uh, yeah, I'm just excited to get this thing up and running. I'm still not sure what we're going to do with drivetrain wise. Like a part of me just wants to see nothing but an RB in here, but I'm curious what you guys think. So let me know in the comment section. But uh, yeah, <sighs> I'm excited, man. This thing is so clean. I can't wait to see this thing ripping again. Like for what it is, it's clean. Where we found it, it's clean. You know what I mean? Like chassis is so straight under there. It's good to be bringing another car back to life. Hopefully next, the Evo. Well, this is, uh, this is the new whip, is it, Rohab? It's hers. It's hers. Moni? Moni, I don't think I've ever seen you in a like anything but a Beater S13. <laughs> or a truck. Beater S13. <laughs> this is kind of nice. Air suspension, dude, leather seats. Yeah. Damn, okay. All right, hang on, let me get in. It's a bit muddy and dirty here, so we'll tap off the shoes in here. Dude, what is all this sheath wire? Okay, maybe, maybe it's got like a Haltech or a Link or something. Sorry, yeah, only, only Link's on my channel, but this thing's kind of nice. Has it got a V6, V8? V6? V8. It's a 5 liter V8. It's a 5 liter V8, damn, okay. And uh, of course it says that it needs a service on the dash. <laughs> it's a what? <laughs> I was just like, of course it says it needs a service on the dash. Oh, they come from factory. They come from service. factory with that needing that? Yeah. Dude, this thing's nice. Huh? Feels like it's got some stiff coilovers, but you know. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, this is nice. I don't think I've ever seen you in such a nice car, Rohab. I know, I, I felt so awkward, you know, driving around in that little snow beater. <laughs> <laughs> snow drift mobile and... Talk about it daily. Yeah. This thing's VIP, this is nice. It is, it really is. It's Dude, dirty right should... now with all my stuff, but... This is a 12-volt port back here as yeah. well. Nice. Huh? I like this. 
<laughs> All right, we're gonna go back to the yard, jump in the caravan. Yeah, this thing's kind of nice. It is. It's smooth, right? It is. It's pretty smooth. I mean, it's better than your previous daily. Yeah. Right, let's not talk about that. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna get in my daily now. This thing's this thing's smoother than yours, and it sounds cooler. It sounds it's cool. also it's locked. <laughs> I just got to the shop and I unloaded a bunch of stuff from the cave van. Just stuff that we ordered, like on Amazon, things that we've needed in the shop for a long time. We got like a kettle so I can boil water and eat ramen because we got a whole batch of ramen there on top of the fridge. We got a microwave as well. Just like basic stuff that I completely forgot about that I should have gotten for the shop a very very long time ago. So I'm gonna go set all of that up here. Um, and that way I can actually like have lunch and eat things here without ha having to go to McDonald's around the corner and hate myself. Um, I also bought this little heat fan thing. This thing's actually cool. It's like a hot stove fan. It sits up there and the heat goes into this little like uh, pad thing and then spins the motor and it just brings all the hot air instead of it just rising up, it actually pushes it out. So that should help like with heating around in this area. Um, but yeah, we've also got a bunch of other stuff here. We've got the back panel here for the S15 because we're going to get the back of the S15 fixed up. As you guys know, we had a little oopsie on that a while ago. Um, so that's going to sort that out. There's not many of these left in stock too. So I'm probably going to buy maybe just like one or two more to just keep in stock um, because it's, I mean, let's be honest with my S15, it's probably going to happen more than once, um, with drifting and all that kind of stuff, you know? Um, and then, yeah, just a bunch of other parts and stuff like that. I need to go through and just kind of tidy up a bit in here too. So I'm going to spend a bit of time at the shop. I I'm not sure if I'm going to have time today, but I'd like to set up this workbench we got here as well. I think that'll be kind of important to get set up and get the vice bolted into it and stuff. But yeah, I'm going to get into it. Shop upgrades, stuff that you just take for granted that you didn't realize that you needed until you did. So let's get this done. Just finished setting everything up. I boiled the kettle a few times. And now we're gonna just have a little bit of some 7-Eleven curry ramen to celebrate that we have some kind of kitchen stuff here, utilities or something. <laughs> Yo, man, I can't believe it's taking me this long to be able to have cup ramen here. To be honest, though, you can just go to the convenience store and, like, there's a you can get hot water at the convenience store to fill up your ramen. They provide that as, like, a service. But, uh, yeah, having this all here, being able to have a microwave here so I can bring, like, meals and stuff from home. Oh, wow, I didn't realize that this got damaged in shipping. Oh, huh, there's a big dent right there. I mean, as long as it still works, I don't really care. But, uh, wow, Amazon Prime. Jeez, just noticed that huge ding there. Oh well, it should be all right. But anyways, I'm gonna let that sit for a bit. I might actually just grab something a bit heavier to sit on top of that. I wanna keep that heat in there, get those noodles done. And then, hey Siri, set a reminder for three minutes and we'll be back. All right, the timer is up. Let's have a look at this curry ramen. Damn, that looks good. Man, Japan is so good at instant ramen. It's actually insane. I'm going to chow down on this and then I'm going to do some wiring stuff in the S15 and probably call it a day. So I've been pretty busy. I got my circuit breaker wired in there. That thing's awesome. 200 amper. Uh, we got the car running right now. I've got the fans wired in. The only thing is I have to run a trigger wire to the Link ECU so the Link ECU controls when it turns on and off. Right now I've just got this little jumper wire here. Listen to these things guys. It's kind of ridiculous. The amount of air that these things pull is kind of stupid. Like, it's crazy. So, um, I'm pretty hyped. <laughs> I, I really think that these are going to be pulling a lot more air than what the stock clutch fan is going to do, especially considering we've got the two spals there, the two big CFM ones, and we've got the LS alternator that can actually keep up to the amperage draw that these things are going to need. You can actually hear the car idle change just from these turning on right now. To hear it like kicking up so we definitely uh, this is why it's important to make sure as well that all of your um, dead timing and voltages and stuff for your injectors are entered in so that when there is a voltage drop like that with these fans turning on and off and whatnot that your ECU can compensate for it and knows like how much extra fuel to spray in and whatnot I'm really excited can't wait to see what these things are going to be like when we're actually out on the track. But I mounted everything up really nice and neat in here. You can see this is the relay box here. It bolted onto the side of the uh, old tray there. We gave it ground right there. All the wiring with the Deutsch plugs are down here. I'm really, really happy with how that little uh, wiring kit worked out. So 
hopefully um, things go well and uh, I should be able to have that wide into the link ECU and controlled and everything from that in uh, probably tomorrow or the day after. Um, but yeah, every, every moment I get, every couple hours spare that I have, I'm just coming here and getting a bunch of little tedious stuff sorted out. This thing just wants to take off. It's hungry for it. It's not even warmed up yet. Man, this thing sounds good. Got the K-Van warming up out there before we head off. Starting to get a little bit chilly here now, but uh, I'm pretty happy with today's uh, progression. We got all the tedious little bits of wiring all sorted out. I got my circuit breaker installed in the back, which one of the best things is, is whenever I leave now, I can just push the button and now the whole car has no power to it. So that's super awesome. Um, and yeah, we got the fans wired up. Just gonna do that last wire to the Link ECU, which I have a wire like already out there by the master cylinder. So once I connect that up and program it in the laptop, which I left the laptop at home, so that's why I couldn't do it today, um, we'll be good. And then the only other things that I have left to mount are the washer bottle for the windscreen sprayers and the overflow tank for the radiator. By the way, these fans pull so much CFM it's actually insane. I can stick my hand here and I can feel so much air pulling through the uh, front of the radiator and the heat exchanger for the um, air conditioning. So it's actually kind of ridiculous. I'm a little bit uh, interested to see how much better this thing is gonna drift and drive with and how many more laps I get without using a water sprayer on the um, radiator and oil cooler. So. I'm very interested. I also have another fan that depending on how things go, I will mount on the front of the oil cooler, but I don't think we're gonna need it with how much those fans pull. So as long as um, the water temps stay down and the oil temps kind of match it and like, like level out, we should be good. But if I need to get the oil temperatures down faster as well, like with the chaser, I have another fan that we can uh, put onto that. But anyways, we're all good to go now. So we're gonna close up and head home. Good night. Oh, nearly made a mistake. Don't want to leave the heater on. Ba -ba -ba -da -ba -ba. Whoosh. Let's get out of here. Goodbye.